Our first scripture lesson today comes from the book of Revelation, and I invite you to turn with me if you'd like to in the Pew Bible in front of you. While you're turning, I'd like to say a little bit about the stole that I'm wearing today. When my father, the Reverend Jack Kaler, was on the staff at First United Methodist in Gastonia, um, he was their minister of visitation, just like Dale Hilton is for us. Um, they made this stole for every minister on staff to be worn at funerals. Now, today is not a funeral, but today is a day when we remember those who've gone on before us. And you will see that the stole um, is adorned with butterflies. And this is not just because I'm a hippie or something like that. Um, the butterfly is a symbol of hope because the butterfly right before our very eyes, rises from the dead, crawls into its cocoon, is transformed, and uh, comes out as a new creature. And so I just wanted to give you that uh, explanation of what I'm wearing today. Um, and to say this, uh, when I moved to this church, my dad gave this stole to me. So it's special to me. Um, so we're going to read from Revelation 7, beginning in verse... Nine. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen! Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And then from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. So today is All Saints Sunday. Today we are remembering those we love who have gone on before us. Um, those bells over there, each one of those represents a saint who has gone on before, uh, the candles we're going to light in a few moments. Each one represents a saint who has gone on before. By the way, I do want to clarify, in the Protestant churches, when we say saints, we don't mean those extraordinary Christians like St. Francis or St. Teresa. We mean all Christians, all who belong to Jesus are saints, sanctified, because, as the reading from Revelation said, they have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. You know, all of us have lost somebody in our lives. A parent, both parents, a grandparent, a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, a child. All of us have lost somebody, and maybe it was a long time ago, or maybe it was very recently and the pain is still fresh, but all of us have lost somebody. It was two years ago that Lori's father, my wife's father, 
who was very much like a father to me, I called him dad, passed away very unexpectedly. All of us have somebody in our lives who has joined the great cloud of witnesses that Hebrews talks about. Today we remember those persons. Today we celebrate their lives. Today we give thanks for how God used them to shape us. Let's bow our heads. Right now, I invite you to picture in your mind one of the saints who's gone on before you, and perhaps you have many saints that you could remember. I'd like you to focus on the one who had the biggest impact on your life. See that person's face. Remember that person's life. Think about that saint right now in silence. Oh God, thank you for the mystic communion of saints. Speak to us today about what that means for us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, last fall, I traveled to Africa, and I missed my wife terribly. My wife, Lori, um, I I just can't stand being away from her. Um, And one of the ways I started dealing with the pain of being separated was I started asking myself the question, I wonder what she's doing right now. And I would look at my watch, and I would think about what time it was back in the U.S., and I would think, okay, this is probably what she's doing. So, for example, I'd go, okay, it's 1 p.m., she's still asleep. Um, Okay, it's 4 p.m., that means she's probably starting work right now. Okay, Um, it's 6 a.m. here, that means it's 10 o'clock p.m. there, so she's probably watching Star Trek. (laughs) Think about that person you pictured in your mind. Wonder what they're doing now. You know, the scriptures that I read tell us what they're doing right now. John gave us, in the book of Revelation, a picture of heaven. And he describes for us what the saints are doing right now. One thing they're doing is they're hanging out with people from all over the world. Um, Revelation 7, verse 9 says, After this I looked... And what John saw in heaven was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Heaven is multicultural. Now, in my lifetime, I've been very fortunate and very blessed to travel all over the world. I've been to Scandinavia, Mexico, Cambodia, Thailand, Nicaragua, South Africa, Tanzania, and Israel. Some of you are going to Israel later this week. And you know what I love about traveling? It's being crammed into an economy seat in the airplane for 10 hours. No, that's not. No, no, no. That's not what I love about traveling. What I love about traveling is meeting people from all over the world rubbing shoulders with people from different tribes and cultures and languages. It's saying, Habare Asabui in Swahili and Chumri Apsur in Cambodian. It's eating posole in Mexico and ugali in Tanzania and antelope in South Africa and iguana in Nicaragua. It tastes like chicken. It's worshiping God in a mud hut in Africa or under a tree in Cambodia or in a church with no sides in Nicaragua. In all those situations, I've gotten a taste of the communion of the saints, the unity in Christ that transcends language, race, and culture. I've gotten a taste of it, but right now, the saints in glory are experiencing it to the full. What else are they doing? Revelation 7, verse 10. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And then in verse 15, For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they worship Him 
day and night. So the second thing the saints are doing, they're worshiping. And one of the things I love here is it says that the worship starts with the saints. It starts with the average everyday Christians who are in heaven, and they're praising God for saving them. They're saying salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. And then here's what happens. The angels hear that, and they get so excited that they start shouting, Amen! That's what it says. They join in and get excited and fall on their faces. Now think about this. In just a minute, when we have communion, We're going to be united with the saints in worship. I will say the words, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending hymn. I'll say those words, and then you will sing, holy, holy, holy. And and when you do that, you're singing right along with the saints in heaven. You're adding your praises to theirs. When we take Holy Communion, we're getting a taste of God's people everywhere across all times and places united in worship. We get a taste of it, but right now, the saints in glory are experiencing it to the full. So what else are they doing? Revelation 7.10 says that God is wiping the tears from their eyes. They're being comforted by God Himself. Think about that. Some of your loved ones went through horrible things. Pain. Injury. Depression. Heart disease. Alzheimer's. Cancer. And when they died, you said, at least their suffering is over. But you know what? It's better than that. They're looking into the face of God right now, and God Himself is wiping the tears from their eyes. Now, you've probably had a time in life when you were struggling, when you had a problem, you were struggling with something, and you prayed, or somebody prayed for you, and you felt better, you felt peace, you got a taste of the comfort of God, but right now, the saints in glory are experiencing it to the full. And then there's one more thing they're doing. And this one comes from Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the great cloud of witnesses, that's our loved ones, that's the people represented by the bells, the people represented by the candles, the people you thought about just a few moments ago. Since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Now, the writer of Hebrews uses the image of a relay race. I wonder if there's anybody here who maybe ran track in high school or in college, and you've run an actual relay race. Anyone? Okay, back there, yeah. Um, So, I am absolutely not athletic, So I've never run in an actual relay race, but I did do the egg on a spoon thing (laughs) when I was in youth group, you know, and and the youth counselor would say, okay, there's a chair down there and you're going to hold the egg on a spoon and you're going to, you know, go and you're going to run around. And, and, And you know what I remember is I couldn't even do that well. I dropped the egg and man, I felt bad, but here's the thing. We've been handed something far more important than an egg on a spoon. The saints we celebrate today have handed us the baton of the Christian faith. And now, they're watching us. The great cloud of witnesses is watching us to see what we're going to do with the baton of faith. Ten years ago in the 2004 Summer Olympic Games in Athens, Greece, our American women's relay team was favored to win, to win the gold. I mean, we had the fastest sprinters, the fastest female sprinters in the world. Marion Jones had won four gold medals at the previous Olympic Games. And so 
the night uh, or, or the day of the race came, and our women were running the four by one hundred, and and um, Marion Jones was running the second leg. She had the baton. She was running towards the next uh, runner, whose name was Lauren Williams. She would run the third leg. Williams started to run as Jones drew near, but when she reached back to take the baton, for some reason they could not complete the handoff. Once, twice, three times, Mary and Jones thrust the baton forward, but each time it missed William's hand. They just couldn't seem to get it. Finally, on the fourth try, they made the connection, but it was too late. They had crossed out of the 20-yard exchange zone, and they were disqualified. The night before, they had had the fastest qualifying time. Everybody knew they were the favorite to win, but when they couldn't complete the handoff, the race was over. Now listen, if we can't hand the Christian faith to the next generation, the race is over. At any given point in history, Christianity is one generation away from extinction. The saints have handed the baton to us. Will we be the generation that fails to hand it off? Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance. Friends, the race of faith is not easy. It's hard. The race of faith has to be run with perseverance. And that's why some people have already dropped out. They've given up. And that's why it's even more important than ever for you and me to take the baton of faith and run with it and hand it off to the next generation. And the great cloud of witnesses, they're watching us. Our loved ones are watching us. And they're cheering for us. And they're saying, go for it. Run the race. Do whatever it takes. Sacrifice whatever it costs. Don't you dare drop that baton. We've handed it to you. Now, you hand it off to others. All Saints Day is not just a day to remember the ones who've gone before us. It's also a day to be challenged by their example. They want us to pick up where they left off. They want us to take the lessons they taught us and the faith they gave us and hand it off to the next generation. The great cloud of witnesses surrounds us. They've handed the baton to us. Will we run the race with perseverance? Or will we be the generation that drops the baton? Let's bow our heads. I'd like you to picture again that saint, that person who's gone before you, the one you thought about earlier. Picture that saint and think about this. What's a lesson that person taught you? What's a a faith lesson, an experience of faith that he or she gave to you? Now think about this. How will you hand off that lesson to others? Oh God, we thank you for the great company of those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. May we be comforted by our memories and by the knowledge that their lives do not end. And God, 
may we be challenged by their example to take what they've given us and hand it off to others. Let all who agree say, Amen. We remember in love the following members of Main Street United Methodist Church who joined the church triumphant in the past year. As I read each name, a candle will be lit, a bell will ring, and I invite you, if you are a family member or friend, to please stand as each name is read. At the conclusion of the worship service, a family member will be invited to uh, receive one of these candles. Julie Alexander. Jean Blink. Helen Fouché. Barbara Hess. Simona Ingram. Golda Lawson. Doris Simpson. Huffy Smith. Richard Smith. Ron Turner. Jack Wicker. Maury Wicker. Nell Wilmoth. We thank God for the life and the ministry of each of these, our fellow Christians who are saints.